What's up, what's up? Yo, it's a gangster. Hey man, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about false teaching. You know, the last video I posted was about um was about how Bible knowledge that God is not impressed by your Bible knowledge. Now you need to know your Bible. You need to know what the Bible says. But you know, there's a lot of false teaching going on out there. And let me explain how it works. You see, most of the people who are who teach false teaching are the very people who will stand there and tell you, this is God's word. Everything in this Bible is true. And they'll tell you that, and then they'll teach from the Bible, and then in their teaching, there's false teaching mixed in among the truth. You might say, well, that don't make no sense. Well, here's the problem. They're so involved in memorizing scripture and learning what the Bible says without, without an intimacy with God. See, they neglect their actual relationship with God and they get so focused on reading their Bible and knowing everything that's in the Bible that they deceive themselves and therefore they, they, they accumulate in their, in their book of revelation that comes from their soul, they accumulate false revelation. And they're deceived because they think they know God's word. But you can't know God if you just know the Bible. You have to know both God and his word. You have to know God and only knowing God and interpreting the Holy Bible based on your intimacy with God, that's the only way to truly discern and to rightly divide God's Word. In other words, if you try to learn the Bible and try to teach the Bible without having an intimate, close relationship with God, you will ultimately end up being a false teacher. Okay? Now, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, uh, well, he said to his disciples, he said, beware of the yeast or the leaven of the Pharisees. And the Bible declares that what Jesus was saying, he was warning them about the teaching of the Pharisees. Let me tell you how, that, how it works. The Pharisees would teach the truth from God's word and then add their own opinion into that. And what that means is when you take... Um, uh, when you take leaven and add it into a lump of dough, that leaven goes throughout the whole batch of dough. Okay? It works its way in. It's imperceivable imperceiv almost. So, for example, a good example, uh, a good analogy for this is when somebody's teaching God's Word, they're going to teach the truth to make you believe that it's the truth and then throw in a little bit of false teaching here, a little bit of false teaching there. So, for example, a false teacher is going to sit there and tell you the truth for about 20 minutes, throw in a little bit of lies, a little bit of false teaching, and then go back into teaching the truth. Okay, so for example, let me give you an example of what I mean. If, I, if you were going to poison somebody, nobody takes a plate and puts a box full of poison, like rat poisoning or whatever, and puts it on a plate and serves it to you for dinner. They don't do that. You'd say, that's poison. No, if you're going to poison somebody, what you do is you prepare a real nice steak, you put mashed potatoes and gravy on the side, green beans, and then hidden in there, hidden in that meal, is a little bit of poison. And they take the gravy, and oh, but that gravy is good. And the meat, that, that steak is good. And then they take one bite, and there's poison in it. And they taste that. And they think, well, you know, the, the mashed potatoes and gravy is good, and the green beans are good, so whatever that was, it must be good too. In the same way, somebody will teach the truth, the teach truth, 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 and then throw a lie in, to try to get you to swallow a lie. Now that's fine if you recognize it, 
but most of the time it's there it, it's presented in such a way that you won't just like poison in a, in a meal and what happens is the first time you you eat a meal with a little bit of poison it doesn't poison you it doesn't kill you but meal after meal after meal day after day eventually you take a bite taste that poison and you think that's normal and eventually, it eventually erode from the inside and kill you spiritually. And so that's, what, that's the leaven of the Pharisees. It's a little bit of leaven that works throughout the whole batch of dough. It's almost imperceptible. And the only way to recognize it is to have a true, intimate, close relationship with God. Jesus said that these signs will accompany them that believe. He said they'll cast out demons, they'll speak in other tongues. It also declares that they can drink deadly poison and it will not hurt them at all. So if you're in, in a church where the preacher is teaching a little bit of false teaching if, and you have a close, intimate relationship with God, that false teaching is just going to roll off you like, like water off a duck's back. But I'm just saying there's a lot of false teaching out there. You know, like, for example, I hear a lot of prosperity teaching. You know, I believe in prosperity. I believe God loves us. He's a loving Father. He wants, to, he wants us to be happy, blessed. But you know what? I challenge, I challenge a, some of these modern-day prosperity teachers to stand in front of Paul, the Apostle Paul while he's got chains and he's sitting there in prison. Would you really preach your prosperity message to Paul? Come on now, I'm just saying. Here's a man who surrendered his whole life to God in order to obey God. See, prosperity teaching is only true if it's balanced. See, a lot of people like to teach on prosperity and they talk about Joseph, how Joseph became the ruler of Egypt and God, da 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 he had all the wealth of the nations came in and that's true. Joseph became very wealthy. But the, it seems like they neglect to mention that all of the preparation of him being in prison, being betrayed by his brothers, having to work as a servant, having to work as a slave, having to, I mean, just all the hell he went through for literally probably 20 years he went through all this struggle and finally he got a breakthrough. But, see, you, you should not ever teach prosperity without teaching the struggles, the trials, and, and just the, and the basic spiritual endurance that you're going to have to experience, the trials. See, we all want our breakthrough. We all want our blessing. And it becomes a self-centered, bless me, God. God becomes a servant of you. I want my blessing, God. I want my blessing. God, give me my blessing. God's not your servant. You're supposed to be his servant. So in a sense, a lot of the prosperity teaching is kind of reversing the roles, trying to make God our servant, trying to make God bring me my blessing, trying to make God heal me. And God is saying, no. God is saying, you, you are my servant. God is saying, I'm not, I'm not your servant. Now, he's a loving God. He's humble. He's gentle. If you need healing, he'll heal you. If you need a blessing, he'll bless you. But let's not forget our place. He is the Lord. We're not to make demands on him. We are not to say, God, bless me here and bless me and give me a new house and give me that expensive car and let me have a this and let me, oh, no, no, and then judge someone else when they're not blessed. Oh, well, why ain't you blessed? You must not be living for God. It's usually the person who's going through trials and struggles and tribulation and all sorts of stuff going on. That's the person who's really saved. And the people who are chasing after money and wealth and calling it God's will are usually the people who are going to stand before God and hear these words. Depart from me, for I never knew you. But Lord, Lord, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? But Lord, Lord, I did this, and I did this. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? Meanwhile, I guarantee you, if the Apostle Paul lived today, he'd walk into church, he'd be dressed kind of in shabby clothes, he'd probably be driving an older, kind of little beat-up car, he just got out of prison, He'd walked in, into some of these churches today and people would look down on him. Who do you think you are? You ain't nothing but a poor beggar. You know? Would show him disrespect. 
And if he said, I'm the Apostle Paul, I wrote all that book that you're reading right there. They'd laugh at him. Oh, yeah, right. Prove it. And he'd be like, man, I can't prove it. I don't, how, how do I prove that? You know? I'm just saying.